A couple months ago, I made a video highlighting six total conversion mods for Crusader Kings 3 that I felt were exceptional or better. However, there were a few that I left out that at the time I didn't think I should cover or had the time to cover that I'd like to go back and introduce to you now. In the last video, I was able to do an even three historic to three fantasy mod split, and I almost thought I wouldn't be able to do that here. And while I did have to pull out a technicality, I did manage to find one historic mod in the 11th hour, so I'm happy to say we have an even three three split once again for this video. I will say there doesn't seem to be that many historical total conversion mods, so as always, if you have any mods you'd like me to try for this future that maybe I didn't see or I haven't talked about, please let me know in the comments. But without any further ado, let's just get started. We're going to jump into historical first. Our first mod is Age of the Fifth Sun, a total conversion mod that brings players to 11th century Mesoamerica, well before the age of colonialism, and allows them to explore the region unlike ever before, as they play as the various indigenous groups with unique assets, cultures, factions, religions, and so on. While it's technically only an alpha and hasn't been updated since August of this year, I do think this one is very much worth a look. I quite enjoyed my brief time playing it, which admittedly wasn't as much as other mods in this list, uh, partially because it doesn't have a whole lot of features, but I do really like it, so that's why I'm including it here. I think a huge reason, to be honest, that I'm including it is because of how unique it is. Not a lot of people are trying to make content for this region in any game, and I think that's commendable. While the map is a little small, I've included other mods like Apotheosis, which also have a small map, and I think that that is as worthy as this mod is. I like the potential for this one a lot. I think it'd be funny if they somehow implemented a sunset invasion decision later on in the development that would allow players to invade Europe as their chosen nation. Could be a fun way to branch into the base game. Or perhaps have it to where you could try and rebel the incoming colonial fleets, although that would be quite a challenge and would require fast forwarding the start date quite a bit. Still an interesting thought. Our second historical mod is Oriental Empires, which aims at not only expanding but dramatically improving the gameplay of Asia. With an astronomical number of new playable countries and rulers, this one has an incredibly active development team and a large community of supporters, although most of those are from China, it should be said. It has features like bureaucracy with traits that can be leveled, nomadic hordes, unique heritage traits, tribute systems, new faiths, and systems for those faiths. Really just a huge amount of stuff that brings this area of the map to life. Not only that, but it allows Asia to compete with the other half of the map content wise. I think players who want to see more out of Asia but are tired of waiting for Paradox should probably consider giving this a try. You get access to new areas, a whole mess of new mechanics, and a dev team that cares a lot about the history of the region. However, a lot of the text is not in English and you will be missing certain aspects of the game by not being able to play it in its original Chinese, which is sort of unfortunate, but I do believe they're working on trying to localize it uh, slowly. It's, it's a difficult process translating between the two, and there's a lot of text from what I can see that you would have to translate. I'm curious about this one. I've played it actually quite a fair bit. It doesn't really bother me that it's not all in English, but for those of you who would, I mean, you could always skip it, but I wouldn't recommend it. I think you should give it a shot. All right, so this final historical one is not technically a total conversion mod. It's technically a bookmark mod, but it does something similar to a total conversion Version, and that's enhance a core experience of the game, uh, which is the Crusade experience in Crusader Kings 3 by bringing the third crusade to life. The Kingdom of Heaven, taking great inspiration from the film of the same name, which is very good if you watch the director's cut, aims to bring the third crusade to Crusader Kings 3 and allows players the chance to play as historical figures from Baldwin IV to Saladin to Richard the Lionheart and even Frederick Barbarossa as they fight for their glory and religious liberations or whatever they're having to fight for. Starting in the late 12th century, the mod primarily lets players have a more focused experience in the Holy Land as you determine what Jerusalem is worth. I've not seen a ton of recent rumblings for this mod, despite the fact it seems to be quite active and the developers are currently working on an update as of November 20th. That, coupled with the fact that the mod aims at a more historically accurate experience, or, you know, within reason, should be enough for many of you to put this on your radar. I, for one, am excited to show more of it here on the channel, so I'd like to consider this the first of hopefully many appearances of it here. Now we're going to jump over to Fantasy, and these are the mods that I'm more familiar with, and I've actually included all three of these on the channel at one point or another, um, so I'm, I'm happy to finally put them in a video. It's been long overdue. Our first Fantasy mod needs almost no introduction, as it's one of the more popular ones on the workshop, and that's God Herja. God Herja is truly one of the more unique settings for a mod, and almost any game in that it isn't based on anything else but its own internal lore, which you can read and explore or simply play at your leisure. It's a dark and dangerous world of magic, monsters, and dead gods, where humanity must forge ahead into an unknown future in the face of impending darkness. The world is dying, and you and your kin are among the last of its survivors. It is up to you to save the world or see its destruction once and for all. This mod is just so, so cool. I'll be honest, when I first loaded it up, I was positively overwhelmed by the potential of it. There are knightly orders, magic, great empires, both broken and rising, unique music, civil wars, wastelands of ghosts, new political mechanics like theocracies, the amazing mercenary and hunting systems. Really, it's almost too much to put into just a brief highlight video. 
and it's so, so worth your time. Out of almost every mod on this list, I think God Herja really allows players to be whatever they want to be, that a hunter of beasts or the leader of a righteous order aiming to take back their ancestral lands, really whatever you want. How much or how little you look into the lore will impact your enjoyment of the game to a point, but as someone who jumped off the deep end and figured it out as I went, I had no trouble following along with, with the internal lore via decisions and story-based pop-ups, which are all excellent, by the way. I really want to see more love for this mod, which it already has a lot, uh, but that's why I put it front and center here on the fantasy list, because it truly is a labor of love. It reminded me a lot, uh, for those of you who played Mountain Blade Warband back in the day, of the Prophecy of Pandor mod. It's just a wonderful, fully realized fantasy world with so much to offer and explore, and it's just getting started. I cannot wait to see what they do, and I really, really hope you check this one out. Our next fantasy mod is yet another one that needs no introduction because it's set in the world of Azeroth. Who, who doesn't know about Warcraft at this point? Warcraft Guardians of Azeroth 2, while still in alpha, is a mod that allows players to journey to Azeroth at the time of Warcraft 3, or relatively around that time, and experience the tumultuous period for themselves. While a lot of its features are still being fleshed out, as I said it's an alpha, I can say that some of the decision trees that have been completed so far, such as the Arthas Menethil one, are exceptional. There's so many races and goals you can set for yourself, even without the added flair of fleshed out stories, to make it easier to come back to. The custom assets are genuinely some of the best in the entire community, from the Murlocs to the Night Elves and so on, and I cannot wait to see what this team does next. There's a lot of options for this one, and I think that scope creep could definitely be a worry, because you could want to include too much, but I feel like what we've seen so far the team is fairly grounded and I think they know what they're doing. The Warcraft series obviously means a lot to so many people so I think I speak for all of us when I say this is not only a welcome addition, but one that many of us are keeping a very close eye on. Our last mod here is another mod that has been featured on the channel, as I said previously, and that is Princes of Darkness. And you know, I feel a little bad that I didn't add it in my last video, because this one was actually one of my main or biggest series for a little while. It's probably one of the most ambitious mods for Crusader Kings 3, in that it aims to bring the world of darkness to Crusader Kings, the world being the base of acclaimed games like Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines, and many tabletop titles. So if you're familiar with that, that, then you'll be familiar with this setting. And even if you're not, there's plenty of lore and plenty of decision trees and other things that pop up that'll sort of explain it for you. The mod has some of the most gameplay changing features and really lends itself to an RPG heavy experience while not being as, well, how do I put this, focused on conquest? You operate in the shadows and most of what you do will be operating in that capacity. Really what I like and what this mod tries its hardest to do is put players in the shoes of their chosen uh, thing, for lack of a better word, be that a vampire, a werewolf, vampire hunter, mummy, or whatever. There's a ton of beings you can play as and I won't list them all here, but the ability to be immortal or somebody who hunts immortals opens up so many avenues, it's frankly ridiculous. Likewise, there's legitimately so much here to do and explore. I've often thought about going back myself and making another series just because there's so much potential. From a unique magic and masquerade system, vampiric abilities and penalties, to a mess of new men at arms and unique assets, this is what a total conversion mod is all about. Changing the game in a way that is not only still in the spirit of the base game, but allows players an opportunity to play something that they otherwise wouldn't be able to. This is also one of the few total conversion mods available to console players, so that's a huge plus in my book, considering how poorly the DLC rollout is for them. In short, the models are gorgeous, the role playing is fun, and the storytelling potential is endless. What more could you want? And that, my dear friends, is it for this one. I wanted to make this one a little bit shorter than the last time. I felt like I had too much of an intro. But here I get to uh, talk about all the other garbage that I talk about on the channel. So remember, I have a community Discord. It is linked on the channel. If you'd like to join us and chat with us, you can always do so. I also have memberships, which you can see here. We recently got three new members. Our first three, we have Illuminanthi. Valadar and Kandriff. I won't be reading off the names every time, but I wanted to give them a little verbal shout out as an appreciation for them joining us. Uh, you can see the perks on the join tab, uh, but as always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube junk. You know how it goes. It helps the channel. It helps me. It helps you see more stuff from me, I guess. Uh, and that's going to be it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a Crusader Kings 3 mod highlight, and I will happily see you in the next one.